Hi, I'm Andrew Rowland, the designer of Napoleon's Imperium. It's a new Compass Games war game and in conjunction with the Australian Design Group. Now today is a very special day for me, which is why I'm decked out in all this regalia and everything, because it's been a 30 year journey. And I want to do an unboxing, a designer unboxing video for you today. It's not uh, as professional as the ones you will see online, but this is more of an experience rather than just an unboxing video. I want you to share with me my first chance to see the board game, which has just arrived in Australia. So it's a little bit longer uh, delayed from you guys over there in the USA and North America. It's just arrived in Australia. So this is my first opportunity to see the game after 29, 30 year journey. Okay, it's no turning back now. Here's the box that it actually came in. So I have not opened this at all, so we shall see. Here we go. Um, gotta be careful, I don't want to any damage here.
Okay, we have some more paper. And here is the product that you can see. There's a couple of games here. So there we have it. Well, it feels quite heavy. <laughs> I'm going to pop one back here and uh, take the second one out for unboxing. This feels very nice. To actually have this now here in front of me is a wonderful feeling. I mean, you mightn't see it, but I am feeling like pins and leaves now, just knowing that the, this has finally arrived. So I'll put my glasses on with this. I don't want to make any mistakes. Um, I don't have the expert coding tool, so here we go. Let's fold this back. I'm sure the uh, professional iron boxes can do this a lot better. But here we go. Plastic out. And we're going to open the lid. And there we are. Okay. So we've got three packs of cards. And these are all the battle cards. So seeing there's 120 battle cards, there'll be 60 in a deck. And we'll have a look at them just a little bit later. And these are the battle point cards. They're the scoring cards. And there's another 80 of those in that deck. The thing I really love, uh, which I'm really pleased about this, is the 10-sided dice. There are 10 of each. One for the French Alliance and one for the British Alliance. So that is really a bonus. I'm really pleased with Compass for allowing that. Um, here is the um, little sheet. There's a couple of little spelling errors, you know, a couple of little rather spelling errors, but mostly these are three additional rules that were added 12 months after this went to uh, print uh, because the Nepo Team Napoleon test team had play tested and found a couple of little additions that really would enhance, particularly in the area of fleet invasions, the limits, um, the army declaration on a fleet and the transport movement on a fleet. So we've added that, so please do look at that and add that into your rule book. We'll put that aside. Next, now this real book, <laughs> I am so pleased to see this. This feels nice. It's a, uh, a nice sort of uh, smooth finish. The weights of the um, pages feel very nice. I'm so pleased and I'm, I'm really thrilled for the, uh, my graphic artist, Vlad Stanescu, who uh, spent so many hours, I mean hundreds of hours with myself, toiling over every aspect of this rule book. A um, lot of late, late nights. Um, we were dealing internationally to each other, so a lot of phone calls in different time zones to go through that. But uh, Vlad Stanescu, um, I take my hat off to you. This looks like a wonderful product. So let's go through it in more detail. So we're going to take the real book out and we'll have, we'll have a little bit more of a look at that shortly. Uh, the next component, here is the weather chart. And I really like the feel of this. It looks really great. Um, it feels nice. Compass have done a really fabulous job. So the, the weather chart, and I'll explain that. It, it has your timeline from 1798 right through to 1815. 18 available years of play. It has each of the five different battle cards, and that's where you actually place your deck, and we'll lay them out to, to show you that a little bit later. The next, and these actually feel and look a little bit bigger than what I anticipated. These are the reference cards. Now, there are eight Empire reference cards. The fabulous thing that I really love about this game um, and that we've developed over the 30 years, uh, particularly with the two test teams that have been associated, is the reference cards. There's one for each empire. Spanish, the Russian, the Austrian, 
you can see all wonderfully de designed uh, Lad has done a really good job bringing the concepts of my vision to fruition. There's the British, the Nordic nations, the wonderful and very powerful French, and the Prussian. So there's eight different reference chart, um, charts that are here. Okay. Next, let's have another look in here. And these feel quite nice. I'm not sure if you can see that thickness, but it's it's a very nice thickness. They've got a, a, a smooth finish on the front. They're very easily uh, readable. But this is the territory chart. So when you're actually setting up the mat, you have all the different territories, and you have the infantry, the cavalry, the artillery, and the fleets the places everything is aligned to so trying to make it as simple as possible for your setup on the back so there's two of those one for the french empire and one for the british empire now on the back color coordinated you have a rules in brief now if you have a look at the rules in brief that is basically all the rules in one sentence per rule just trying to abbreviate them down to something quickly you can understand so you don't always have to refer to the rule book trying to make this game run as smooth and as fast as possible at the base you know the special abilities chart every nation in this game has special abilities they what differentiate the nations between one to the next so down here is a quick reference. So if you're playing against an, an opponent and you want to know what their special ability is, you can look down here and you can find all of the special abilities. So let's pop those aside for now. And this is the piece of resistance. This is the map. It's in two pieces. And we'll open that up a little bit later, um, but it's in two pieces. Um, 44 inch by 34 inch is the finished size, but we'll have a look at that. It feels really nice. And I want to get to the counters. Now, I have watched some unboxing videos that are out there already of Napoleon's Imperium, and they've done a splendid job, let me say. Um, if you really want to watch a professional, um, go to some of the others <laughs> and watch, but I've already learned my lesson from watching them. These are so well cut that uh, apparently they just drop out when you unwrap it. So I'll have a little bit more of a look at this in just a moment. Okay, so uh, I don't recommend you do it this way at home. Use your specialized knife rather than what I have prepared here. Uh, so I'll try to gently do this because I'm afraid they're all going to just uh, pop out the moment I am. Um, Unwrap them at all. Have you already seen this done a few times? Okay, so let's have a look. So this is the Russians. So you'll see the Russians here. You've got some Prussian flags. The um, you've got different colours over the the borders. See if they've got an orange border. It means they're two units. If they've got a blue border, it means they're five units. And if they're just without border, it's a single unit. Over here, you'll see these are the major commanders and the minor commanders. So the major commanders have all got gold around them. And they, um, I won't go through all the gaming rules, but they have modifiers, bonuses. The minor commanders have silver around. They don't have as many modifiers as the major commanders. Let's go to the next sheet. Very careful sliding off. And here we have the Nordic nations. So the Nordic nations is a combination of Norway, Denmark and Sweden. So you'll find some images on here. Now the images are fabulous that you'll see on this because I really wanted to bring the taste of the tabletop with all those fine hand painted figures into the Napoleon's Pyramid as a board game. So a lot of these figures that you see, particularly here in the Nordic um, nations, are all hand painted by a gentleman by the name of Peter Cross, who is a fine art painter when it comes to figures. You'll see them in the Prussians as well. 
um, and he has just done a fabulous job and I really wanted to that to transpire into the game. Note here some of the Nordic nations and we might be able to see a few more into the next sheet and you can see already those counters are coming out how easy they just fall out. We'll have a look at those in the moment. But have a look at these Nordic nation pictures. You probably won't be able to see them to actually get them. But here is actually my own design. So that is, those figures when they were 28 mil were designed by um, myself and um, with some of my friends putting input in. Um, so I had my own range of 28 millimeter pieces that uh, the National Arsenal Museum in, in Copenhagen, Denmark helped me out with some plates. But let's have a look at one of these counters. Since they've fallen out, let's just take one out, shall we? Let's take one of the flags, so easy. So it's a really nice feeling, they're quite thick. And it's a nice feeling counter, I really love that. Um, I'm very pleased, very pleased. On the back is just the reverse of the front with these. So if you flip them over, they're going to look the same when they're on the, on the table. So we'll just move the Prussians aside. There's some beautiful Prussian figures there. And I've uh, celebrated that with uh, wearing, you can see my Prussian uniform, uh, Napoleonic uh, Dragoons. Um, sorry, Hazars. Um, okay. So here we have the Austrians uh, and all their figures feeding over into the start of the Spanish and the rest of the Nordic nations with their flags. Moving over to the Ottomans. I love the Ottomans especially, they have camels. You'll see there's the single counter, the two counter and the five counter, and they are quite interesting to play. I love playing the Ottomans. And that's aided by the fact that my wife is Turkish and I've been over to Turkey nine times doing a bit of research and a bit of recreation over there at the time. Here's the Spanish, the beautiful um, hand painted figures that are on the Spanish counters. I really love again by the masterwork of Peter Cross and beautifully designed again, once again by Vlan Stanescu. Um, the Spanish flags and the fleets as well. And we'll move over here to the British. I love my British as well. You'll see very nice British and you'll see some riflemen, some, some cameo performance of riflemen and I explain that probably a little bit further when it comes to um, uh, you might, uh, Paper Wars, the Compass Edition, Paper Wars 99. I go into a bit of a deep dive of the game. So let's move over here and you can see they're all coming out very quickly now. The Ottomans, so we'll just stack them aside to the last and the very powerful French with their beautiful figures. And I love this French flag that uh, decorates and adorns the uh, map once it's out there. Um, and I think people will have a lot of fun playing the French. Actually, every nation on here has its own personality, its own economy, its own strengths and powers, its own geographic position. So they are very unique to play. And I do hope everyone enjoys that. So that's the counters. Okay, so I'm just um, doing the battle point cards now. I really would love to see how these cards feel in the hand. Uh, these are not the battle point, uh, yes, they're the battle point cards. So, have a look at that. They feel very nice. They're firm, they're just a nice thickness. They're not too thin, not too thick, um, but they feel like they can just run off your hand very easy. You see how beautifully they're designed from, from the various types from sea defense. So I'll just set them up and show you how they look on the board. So there you have as they're laid up onto that. So you have the successful land defense worth 10 points, the captured capital with 30 points, sea victory 10 points, the spy death 20, um, 20 points and a captured commander 10 points. This is very themed in its, then it's an hourglass. And that is your time counter. So as you move from year to year, every time eight players have a turn, it's one year and you'll move up to the second year. 
and third year and so on and so on. So that what is what the um, hourglass counter is for. The weather chart up here, there are optional rules that you'll roll a 10 sided dice and depending on what number will t determine what weather it is for that playing year. So here's the battle cards. I'm, um, I can't say how happy I am to see these. I, I cannot tell you enough how much work has gone into this and I'm so uh, nervous <laughs> opening them and getting something wrong uh, because they are just so much work, research, love over many, many years has gone into creating these cards. So I'm just going to put that stack there for a moment while I open the second stack. Um, so it appears from the colors just on the side that they're probably all um, mixed in together. So there'll probably have to be a bit of sorting to do, but they're basically eight stacks within there, eight stacks of 20 cards, one representing each empire. So, uh, so if you go through a lot of Spanish, Prussian, Ottoman, and so on, Russian, so it looks like all those in that pack. In this one, we're moving over to the Nordic, the French, oh, that they look beautiful. I'm, I'm um, salivating over these, having seen them for the first time. Uh, you can imagine after so many years to actually seeing this. But what I love is when you turn them over. Every single card is different, a different color scheme. It's got a, uh, a different message, a different story. And although you might see that there is, you know, British troops um, land north of Copenhagen, taking all by surprise, forcing the surrender in 1807, minus one infantry, take one Nordic fleet and place at Portsmouth. So although there's very little wording, I try to keep the wording as simple as possible there's a lot of story behind it. So you can go in and research the individual stories uh, for all the particular ones and a lot of different research, but they're quite beautiful. So there's with the reference cards, the battle cards, the British, the Nordic, the French and the Ottomans, their reference cards with the um, easy playable references of everything you need to know is basically on there with a nice little map so you can sit aside with one of your um, teammates and you can strategize where you're going to move without the, your opponent seeing what you're going to do. You can sort of point out your maneuvers, etc., which is um, a little handy backflip chart. But uh, you can see on the reference charts there, you get your order of play, your turn phases, there's only three turn phases, your military costs, what it costs to purchase everything, your movement, uh, what it costs to move and everything, uh, your fleet capture rate so after a battle if you had a fleet battle you get a chance to capture a fleet if you're the victorious fleet and the avoid rate so if you want to pass by another fleet without doing battle um, you can they can choose to try to cite you that's your avoid rate and also this is your attack strength and this is your defense strength now i've already said to you there's 10 sided dice so all the numbers signify that you have to roll that number, the equivalent of that number or less to score a hit. Anything above is a miss. So that's what all the numbers signify on the dice. So a lot of dice because you rolled a lot in this game. So I'm really pleased about that. Moving across, Prussian, Russian, the Spanish and the Austrian. And again, all of the beautiful reference cards that I'm really delighted to see. The next we're going to set up the, um, the map and have a look at the rule book. So here's the full size map. As you can see, it's quite a gigantic map. It's in two pieces. Um, I'm certainly going to put a, a perspex over it um, so I can move all the counters around. Um, but I just love the map. It's the piece of resistance of this game. It is bright, it is clear, it's easily understandable. That's the whole concept behind this um, map, that it's very understandable. I wanted to 
uh, cap encapsulate the games table, the large round games table and the round map with the Christopher Columbus style map but in bright gold colours of the particular nations because the Napoleonic Wars after all was a time of great pageantry. Every nation had these beautiful uniforms that they would uh, deck out their armies with and the bright colours and everything. It was not such a, a dull affair. It was a very bright affair with beautiful flags and the colours that they would parade before the streets um, when they captured the colours of another nation. So it needed to be that way. And with the fast moving games, I wanted, you know, for instance, my eyes aren't as good as they used to be. So I wanted something that could be quickly identified where you were on the map uh, with your playing pieces, with your nations, you know exactly where you stand, nice and easy. And the round, I still wanted to encapsulate the round. All of these are the economy lines. So if you look at the map and you take a look at all of these numbers, they go from one to 30. And each nation starts with a different economy. So for instance, the French start with 17 and the English start with 16. The Spanish, I think, around the, the 12, 13 mark, and you gradually build up. So every particular territory has a number associated. You can see these numbers associated on every territory. And the combination, the total of all numbers together, make your total income points. So your total income points here, the total sum of the French would be 17. So you would have a French counter um, that would the 17 on the map, so let me just see if I can find one of these counters. Okay, so I take one of the French counters, coin counters, and I place it on number 17. So where are we down there? And I would gradually move up as I take over other territories. So there's eight different nations, and there's a capital symbol on each of the capital territories. They're worth a little bit more in income, and if you lose those capitals, you're down to half income. So you don't want to do that. But that's the way it's laid out. Every single um, nation has a territory. They have geographic positions that are unique to them and give them advantages and disadvantages. For instance, if you have a look in the center of the map, you've got Prussia and Austria, and it's right into the cannon fodder with those two nations. They are right into battle, and I guess it's a game of teamwork for two to eight players. Now there is one mistake just on the back of the box, and it's my error, nobody else's. Um, it does say to all six players on the little icon for, for players. That's incorrect, it's two to eight players, but you can play this solitaire. Obviously you need a little bit more patience to play it solitaire, but because everything changes so much with this game, you can play it solitaire and uh, you will find that even though you might be planning one way, it'll go a different way because of the battle cards. The way this nation, this game is set up, there are eight, uh, eight nations in two alliances. Now the two alliances are fixed alliances in this base game. In the base game it's a north to south type scenario. And you might say to me, well this country was never really aligned for that long with that country. But this is meant to sp um, span over 18 years of battle. And throughout the Napoleonic um, period, there were seven different coalitions. And there were lots of different sub-wars as well. You know, so there was the Russian and the Finnish war, it was the, all the Russians, the Ottomans. And at different times, everyone was at war with everyone else. And there were different treaties in place. So the way that we was managed that, to have a fast moving game, is to encapsulate that through the battle cards. So in the battle card consequences, there's a whole lot of different things, including the different tensions and the treaties between nations. So for instance, when you're looking at the French nation and the Austrian nation, of course you know there was different times they were against one another. Um, there was different treaties that aligned them with each other maybe a little bit reluctantly on the part of the Austrians being aligned with the French. I've tried to reflect that in the actual battle cards. So those tensions might limit the different uh, cohesion between these alliances. But this is the base game. 
Now, I've been developing this game for 29 years, 30 years now. I've been developing this game. And do you think it's going to stop right here? No way. I will continue to develop this game and there I have a myriad of ideas that I'm going to put into this map that as a base map to take it further. But we'll see how this game goes. I really hope everyone enjoys it so that it will be successful and we can go on to bigger and better things because I am sure all of you will immediately have so many ideas and so many different house rules. That's what this game lends itself. It lends itself to the imagination of what you can bring into the game. So, so much more than this. And we've already been away and working on that. But this is the base game. The map is beautiful. Beautiful designed again by Vlad Stanescu. Um, I think you can appreciate that um, from the compasses, the little illustrations that give us that Christopher Columbus fill, the terrain markings, the uh, coastline which are beautifully aligned. You'll see that this globe is elongated. The reason why it's elongated like this is to get as much room and space into the territories so that those counters would fit within. Now in the future days, weeks, months, I will start playthroughs with other players and we'll start to video that and I'll put it on my um, YouTube channel so that you start to see and we'll answer a lot of those questions. Uh, you can always go to Board Game Geek where there's a lot of questions and answers there, but um, it'll be an opportunity that you can see just how it plays out. And before we go, I'll have a quick look at the rules and then I'll do a quick summary. So Napoleon's Imperium, the rule book. Um, I love this rule book. Um, there was a lot of work. Uh, quite a number of different editors that uh, went through that in part and a lot of the test team actually read a lot of the rule book but uh, one chap in particular who went thoroughly through it that um, I really want to acknowledge that's Guy Wernhardt. Uh, Guy is just a source of strength um, right throughout the game development time and he really um, toyed over this so many times for me as I went through so much appreciation and thanks um, also there's a lot of other people that I, I'll put some credits at the end I really want to um, acknowledge and I'll put them in in the credits but here you have the table of contents on the first page that you can easily find your way around remember I've got reference cards and by reference cards so you don't need to refer to here as often but if you want a clarification yes certainly forward to there's a bit of a history to the forward um, which tells about the development of the game, why the alliances are aligned one way um, for this base game. And um, a picture of one of the earlier shots in uh, 1995, uh, when I was much, much younger and a lot more handsome. And I did have some colour in my hair back then. That's long since gone. Product information. Okay, so this is just a bit about the, the, the contents, the intro. We move through to the, um, the, the different symbols of the game, the counters, the uh, capitals, uh, the different components, the flags, the battle cards. Everything is all explained. I've tried to make this, again, very simple in the read through so it all leads into the next thing um, the number of uh, it leads into the objectives so I won't say much about the rules apart from this two two ways that you can win a battle point victory which is probably the most popular which means you can limit the years of play down to a certain amount of years or a capital victory where you're trying to get three capitals which is a much more um, a difficult objective to achieve but you'll see that it goes through from your three phases it just works through your sequence with a lot of examples so there's uh, notes in the the pink and in the green there are examples and with little pictures and examples of where everything goes how everything works it's really easy laid out very easy on your eyes so even though it's a 40 page rule book you know, compared to maybe a different real book, this might be condensed to say 15 pages if it was just the words or that, because I've got a lot of examples and I've a lot of illustrations through this to make it as simple as possible for 
of the player to learn. Everything is about simplicity in Napoleon's Imperium so that you can pick it up nice and easy and get into battle. So going right through, I love the fact that, um, yeah, and it's been um, highlighted by some other wonderful YouTubers which I really admire but about to imprison or parole your commanders, goes into sea attack. I love ships of the line and I really wanted this to have a lot of fleet battles and uh, sea battles involved and the ocean to play a big part as it did in the Napoleonic Wars with things like the Battle of Copenhagen, the Battle of Trafalgar, um, the, the, over at the, the Nile as well. So it continues right through. Uh, treaties, talks about the treaties, some of the diplomacy of the game. Uh, remembering I tried to build this in a simplistic way it's not trying to have there's enough meat in there for the person that really likes to have a, a bit of a meaty game but it's simple enough for anyone who really doesn't have a great knowledge of history or love for the period to come and play and find something easy because the history is built into the game it's built into the battle cards it's made as simple remember this game came from corporate training team building and when you're doing corporate training and team building people not they don't necessarily want to know everything about history they just want to play a game that's going to build help their uh, team skills so that's where it's come from that development very different from development of other games and then there's some optional uh, advanced rules so you can play with a spy it's a wonderful element of incorporating spy and espionage into the game there's a lot of different spy rules and that's so once you've played the game, you've got the flow of it, you're enjoying it, then you can bring maybe one of the option rules or maybe two of the option rules. Depends on you and how you're feeling. So the spy is a wonderful component. Um, and then there's weather. It's another optional rule and it affects all different things as far as your movement, uh, whether the, your fleets are going to freeze in the Baltic Sea, whether your artillery is going to be able to move in snow, things like that and uh, storms when you you won't be able to land your invasion fleets etc so that's another wonderful component then there's a glossary terms it's not many glossary terms it's not comprehensive this is more about the being able to play the game not play the rules as i've heard before i, I really love that term because that's what this is all about and then there's this wonderful area of game ranks and I really want people to take note of this because on the score chart which is on the next page there are so many different ways to earn battle points and that's what it's all about in a battle point victory is the different ways that you can earn battle points and they accumulate now it's a team based game so you're so even though you might um, top score it's about your team getting the top score and winning over the opposing team so you're building all these battle points at the end of the day you've got there are different areas where you'll get bonuses as far as your ranks and this is how to determine the different types of victory from everything from a capital victory to a war ending victory campaign major victory minor victory right through to the different types of victory and the ranking points that you get as a player now you can build your ranks with these ranking points and with what um, from here you just use your guide to tell you and then when we, we have to have some forums online that you can start to record your rank and go up and down ranks as you build your um, game skill so that's a lovely little addition because we hope to build quite a bit of a forum and following and have lots of competitions online in regards to this the game credits please do take note these if you're going to um, be doing a game for the period of time that I have over three decades there's a lot of people to thank a lot of people that have been very significant along those lines and I've got some of the key names all here particularly all of my uh, special thanks these are the people that really helped me immensely right throughout the period in the game development in the play testing uh, and the you know highlight ones Harry Rowland from Australian Design Group and all of the acknowledgements for the designers. The last page here, uh, second last page, is an index. So say if you wanted, you, know, you just thought, Rebellion, where is that? So it's a different from the front in, in, um, index because that's, you know, in order of appearance. This is just 
in order of subject. So you can find a subject and quickly find. It's another way to quickly find things in the real book. And here we have a table of contents. Every component that's in the game is here. You can go through and check that everything is here. And lastly, there's a nice little um, story of how the game developed and the different types of table from the square table back in 1992. There was one with terrain before this one. Um, to this one in 1904 and there was one in between this one as well to, to the conversion today um, that you see Napoleon's Imperium. So I'm going to have the final wrap up and word now. So I really have to give a shout out to um, Bill and uh, John and all the team at Compass uh, because they have um, brought my dream to reality. In seeing this, I cannot tell you just how it makes me feel to actually see a tangible board game with all of those wonderful components so wonderfully produced by Compass. Um, those guys are just fantastic. To place their faith in a new designer like myself and to see something and nurse me through and see something come into fruition like this is just outstanding and I hope because of it, um, it gets to enrich some of your lives with um, some wonderful, uh, you know, laughter and gameplay because this is all about the enjoyment, this is all about the fun, this is about the banter, about the, you know, uh, laughter over a game of friendly um, war gaming together. So I really do hope you enjoy this, but I'm just thrilled. I'm not standing here disappointed by what we see. I'm standing here thrilled by what I have in my hands. And um, it's, you know, the end of one season, one journey in my life, but you can bet that I'm going to take this a lot further. I'm, I'm just so thrilled. I'm passionate about the game. I thank you all for taking the time to share my experience of unboxing. And I thank you for all the supporters out there along the way and uh, those others that uh, are showcasing my game. Thank you so much. Thanks, Compass.